Hey, I've come up from the dwarven mines deep into the ground, and I'm here to tell you that everything you're about to hear on this podcast is completely improvised. The film title and director's names are kept secret from our guests and team until the moment that we hit record. They're about to work together to create a film that will undoubtedly be a box office smash hit. Welcome to this week's episode of the Improvised Movie Director Podcast. Steven Spielberg said, I don't dream at night, I dream all day. I dream for a living. And what a dreamer he is. An alien on a bicycle, who'd have thought it. Today's director is also a dreamer. Never one to shy away from challenge. They push cinematic boundaries from the impossible to the unforgettable. I'm Martina Minow, and I'm joined today by Chuck Mountain, director of Napoleon Dynamite Duck. Welcome, Chuck. Hi, Martina. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm so excited. Napoleon Dynamitey Ducks. What an inspired film. Well, the thing you've got to remember about filmmaking is everything has been done before, but not everything has been done before with ducks. Mm. Rule number one of all filmmaking, that you should write it down. I, I will. When in doubt, add a duck. Good to know that. No, add several ducks. Multiple ducks, yes. Well, there were a lot of ducks in this film, weren't there? My goodness. That's right. Uh, at the last count, we think we had over 17 ducks in the production at any given time. That is a lot of ducks. It's a lot of ducks. That's the most ducks I've encountered in a film before. And what a wonderful film it was. Now, Chuck, obviously, I watched it the moment it came out. However, some of our listeners, they might not yet have seen it. Can you tell us, what is Napoleon Dynamite Ducks all about? Well, the first thing I should say is that all the animal cruelty that you see on the screen was real. Because a lot of people think that blowing up ducks is the sort of thing that you can do using CGI. And we spent our first 50 million trying to create CGI ducks that we could realistically explode. And let me tell you something, those Marvel films, it's not actually that easy to blow up a duck. So we had to go back to the drawing board and we drew a duck exploding. And then we realised that if we just used real dynamite and real ducks, the story wrote itself. I can see that. And, well, I've never seen an exploding duck before and I'm of a very fragile mind and I found it quite difficult. However... I was rather attached to your main character, Napoleon. I thought he was a wonderful duck. He was brave, he was bold, he was fearless. I rather liked him. Actually, I'm really glad that you noticed that because the thing about Napoleon is that he was very brave and fearless because he knew that he could explode at any time. Mm. But it didn't stop him from giving the best performance that he possibly could. It's like having a ticking time bomb in your brain and knowing that the next thing you could say could be the last thing you ever say, but also acting. Oh my goodness, I've never really thought about it like that. We're only one stick of dynamite away from destruction. I must, I must live every day as if it were my last. And also, you're a duck. Yes. So there's all the philosophical consequences of being a duck. Yes. As well as the philosophical consequences of exploding. And we thought that's what audiences needed, and we tried very hard to make it a PG-13. You know, Mr Mountain, they should have called you Mr Valley, because you are very, very deep. Let's cut to the opening sequence, where we meet Napoleon for the first time, and he tells his feathered friends to live every day as if they might explode. Here we go. Oh, Mr. Napoleon, uh, I'm filled with lethargy. I don't see the point of going down to the pond today. God, why don't you just go and kill yourself then? I mean, like, if you haven't got any lust for life, then what are you? I love to dance. Dance is my passion. 
I also like hockey. Hockey and dance. Dancing while playing hockey. We could all explode at any moment. It's like a big bang. It's just incredible. Well, what's the point of doing anything, Napoleon? I know that you have your very successful tap dance career and you love to dance, but for most of us, we're not that coordinated. What's the point of it for the rest of us? The point is that you're going to die so you can be sad all the time or you can think you're going to die so I can do whatever the fuck I want. I suppose that's right. The ultimate escape from consequences, from, from ramifications, is death. And it's random. It's indiscriminate. It comes to most ducks, apart from Betsy. We don't talk about Betsy. Uh, regardless, uh, for almost all of us, it's an inevitability. So why don't I just go out and do whatever I please? You're right. Nobody can catch me now. I'm a duck without consequences. without consequences they're liberated our paltry friends are out living their best lives we see the 17 of them pursuing pursuing these passions there's a tap dancing duck there's a crochet duck there's a duck doing stand-up it's marvelous i never knew how many passions ducks could have and did you notice there even though i'm an auteur i do think about my films being successful to as large a market as possible which is why we wrote into the script the mention of hockey now when we say hockey we mean hockey on ice rather than hockey on grass what we have in this country and of course, ducks are very good on ice, so that's why we thought it made sense in the context of the oeuvre. Mm, and you've really pushed the oeuvre to its full extent. We see this this compelling hockey match between ducks, um, and it's, it's all getting a little feisty, isn't it? And we see their deepest, darkest passions coming out right there on the ice rink. It's, uh, it's pretty compelling stuff, Mr Mountain. The other thing about hockey is violence, and of course exploding is also violence and I think the actors did a really good job of channeling that violence and when you know that you're either going to play ice hockey or explode you do think about what you want to achieve in life as a duck absolutely let's cut to the iconic hockey match where we see the ducks the pucks and it's all getting into a bit of a ruckus here we go That's a foul! You had your web in my face, you stupid mallard! You have no idea what you are talking about, you foolish pond duck! There is nothing in my face or your face about my body or your body. Look, I, I don't know whether you're Canadian or Italian, but I don't like you! I am both. My mother was a Canadian goose and my father was an Italian mallard. And I will thank you that I grew up in Marseille, but it cannot be reflected in my accent and that is acceptable. You know, sometimes when you grow up with a bomb in your brain as a duck, you must play ice hockey and not worry so much about how your bill forms the syllables of the English language. You understand me, no? So you understand my contempt for you and I could say it in a thousand languages, but I won't. Look, I don't give a duck and I just think you're quackers. Oh. Quackers, is it? Quackers? I think you are a loaf of bread that has been torn up after three days on the Sainsbury's bakery shelf. I think you have been flung into the Thames, to the mouths of ugly swans that dabble and dipple in the water. You are an insult to duck kind, young man. And I will say to you once more, Napoleon, next time that you come to the ice hockey rink, you'd better bring your A-game or else you'll be out. I'm going to bring my D-game. I'm a duck. That was pretty good, actually. But yeah, well done. So, why don't we just puck on? What a mother ducker he was. It was all very uh, feisty, and we see Napoleon there, fearless, brave, bold. But I did wonder, Mr. Mountain, does he have some ambitions off the hockey rink? He seems to have something yearning in his soul. Oh, well, I mean... That that would be a spoiler, but I guess we're assuming that everyone in our audience has already seen the, the final scene, so I think it's all right to tell you, uh, oh, I'm very conflicted about this. Yes, there's a lot of other things going on in Napoleon's mind other than hockey, uh, and the first thing that I should probably say is that 
This isn't his first rodeo. Oh, interesting. And what I mean by that is he was once a cowboy duck who lived outside the normal norms of society before being professionalised and entering the Canadian ice hockey leagues despite being about to explode at any moment, which actually, ironically, meant that they paid him more than the other ducks. Oh, interesting. I didn't realise that the duck pay gap still existed. Helpful to know. Um, yes, we do see Napoleon on a horse, which isn't a sentence I thought I'd say, but here we are. Um, and it's like he's reconnecting with his roots, his cowboy roots. And actually, if you don't mind me saying, Mr Mountain, he never looked happier than when he was on that horse. No, and the thing you've got to remember about ducks that have got dynamite sticking out of their behinds is it's actually quite difficult to anticipate exactly what sort of facial expression they're going to have to show contentment. Mm. Because... Obviously now a lot of us are in the content game, but when we say content, it's content like the kind of movie that I've made for people to watch and enjoy at home and in cinemas. But I mean content as in true internal happiness. And I think maybe if you know you might die tomorrow, it's actually a good thing to be happy. But you're right, he was much happier when he was on a horse back in the American Wild West. Because, of course, the thing that a lot of people out there don't understand is... Ducks live for a long time. They live for a long time. Humans, 30 to 35 years. Ducks can go on for centuries. And that's why we thought that we'd put him in with also the ticking time bomb of death. It was a juxtaposition. I see it. I see it. It's, it's that real memento mori moment in your films that really strike me and a reminder to seek contentment and contentment can't be found at the bottom of a sherry bottle or at the end of a box of Ferrero Rocher. It can be found in the Wild West at one duck on one horse connecting with nature and their friendship, well, it was quite moving. I've never known a duck and a horse be such good pals. Let's cut to... God, this horse, I've never had so much motion. Mr. Horse, yeah, you can't speak any words, but there's so much communication. There's so much communication between the two of us. Shall I sing to you? Ride him up, pull him out, ride him up. Hide, head him out, ride him up, head him out, ride him in, hide. Ride him up, heat him up, roar hide. Beautiful. I'd never heard that song before. Is it a classic? Yeah, it's a classic. And actually, we had to spend about another third of the budget on securing the rights to it because it were in a film called Blues Brothers where they destroyed a lot of cars and we thought they destroyed a lot of cars, we destroyed a lot of fowl in terms of aquatic animals and we thought it made sense if we did like a little secret callback to that previous movie. So clever, so clever, Mr Mountain. And so also we get to see them in this new dynamic out in the Wild West working together, Napoleon, the last duck standing, and he has one final ambition he wants to feel before that ticking time bomb goes boom. Tell us, what was Napoleon's secret darkest desire? Well, that's something that I guess we don't really talk about enough in movies, because mm. at the end of the day, even though he's this tough, gruff, buff exterior, inside him is a duck heart of just love. He just wants to be understood and loved and petted before he dies. And I think, actually, a lot of the motivation for the various people that he punches and explodes and falls off is actually just him yearning for love and never, ever truly finding it. And some people say my film is a bit of a sort of thriller... Sure, I'll accept that, but I think ultimately it's a love story. I see that. I see that, that yearning, that pursuit of love. Well, I could hypothetically imagine what that might feel like for a lonely duck. All breast and thighs, but no one to cuddle. Yes, I think I 
could probably hypothetically perhaps one day imagine how that might feel. We have the moment where Napoleon reveals who his great love is, in sonnet, no less. Wonderful. I've written a sonnet for you, Mr. Horse, because you're my one true love. Shall I compare thee to a summer's crust? Slightly stale and brown. <laughs> or shall I compare thee to a French baguette made by an Italian Canadian and just fresh out of the oven, warm and soft, yet willing? Like the fruits of a summer vine, so heavy with ripe juice. Warm, soft, yet willing. That's what I write on my Tinder profile. But alas, no swipes here. I feel like that scene was probably the one that we had the most difficulty with convincing the certificators to say that we could have a PG-13, if I'm honest. Yes, it was a very big baguette. I wasn't quite sure how you got away with that. CGI. Ah, I see, I see. Ah, all about that digital enhancement, I understand. So we, we see this moment between the horse and Napoleon. And I think to myself, a happy ending in every respect. But no, it's not meant to be, is it? Because Napoleon Dynamite Ducks is a bit of a tragedy. Let's cut to the closing sequence. So, Mr. Horse, now that we've won the ice hockey league, highly unconventionally with you having four skates on and me riding you, I think we should finally tie the knot. Will you make me the happiest in the world? And... <gasps> That was the last of it. You join us now at the ruins of Montreal Stadium, where it's said that a duck with dynamite inside its anus was permitted to play in an ice hockey tournament. Despite the incredible safety risks, uh, the duck's centuries of life were brought to an end by the sparks from a ice skating horse, it says here, Katie. Is that? Yep, that's apparently where we are in Canada now. Um, back to you in the studio, where we can watch an otter playing swing ball. And just like that, Napoleon's life extinguished. I can still smell the dynamite. It hasn't left me. Mr. Mountain, was there ever an alternative ending you were thinking of? Or was it always destined to be this way? I think we always wanted to roast the duck at the end. And actually, I was talking to a lot of people that said maybe we could get the film in 6D and just have, like, piped smells of burning but still fragrant duck coming into the cinema from all directions. And then I was told that that doesn't exist yet, so we can't do it. But, yeah, I'm afraid to say that, that this particular character was always destined to die, but ultimately... Are we not all destined to die? In my case, very soon. But in a duck's case, possibly in a few hundred years. But at even the back of his mind, he knows that one day is his day. And he tried to live his life before that, and I respect that. Well, Mr Mountain, I hope your day won't come for quite some time. Your work is an exploration of the oeuvre that I have never seen before. Your commitment is inspiring and you've really prompted me to think hard about my own life choices and how I spend every single ducking day. Now, Mr Mountain, I have heard a rumour that there might be another film in the offing. Tell me, is it true? I'm afraid to say that it is true. Yes. 
Can you tell us a little more, Mr Mountain? Don't be shy. Well, I guess I can because I got over the whole spoiler thing earlier on, so now I'm willing to say whatever. So we're moving on from the realm of exploding ducks because we've realised now that once you've blown up a duck once, you can't blow it up again. And one thing that may you can't really see that well in this film is I've always really liked town planning. I've always been really interested in town planning. I think that's why I had so many scenes set in Montreal, because Montreal is a very well-organised city. So, actually, my new film is a bit of a departure. It's a very, very, very in-depth and dry look at what happens if you do town planning, but in space. Interesting. And, and what's the film called, Mr Mountain? It's called... Town planning in space. Inspired. Town planning in space, where it's notoriously full of space. How exciting. Let's cut to the trailer. Town planning in space, directed by Chuck Mountain, enjoyed by everyone. Outside a world where towns and cities have already been planned. One space station is home to the Mars Urban Planning Committee. What if we put the hydroponics next to, and bear with me, next to the waste outlet? You have no authority here, none at all, to make that suggestion. I'm, I'm sorry to, to speak up. Did you just, did you just kick her out? Did you just throw out the airlock? Oh, goodness gracious me! He, he, he has. Find the space code. Find it and understand it. Starry. Real astronauts from the International Space Station and introducing Hanford Parish Council. Urban Planning in Space, a Chuck Mountain documentary. Oh my goodness. I can't wait, Mr. Mountain. How marvelous. Yeah, I think. It's a bit of a departure, like I said, but I reckon we've got the budget and the cast needed to tell such an important story through the ancient art of documentaries in space. Wonderful. And, and Mr Mountain, I already know, I can tell, that you use cinema to deliver your philosophies to the world. And as we close out today's podcast, I wondered, do you have any final words of wisdom for our listeners today? I think I do have some final words of wisdom, which is to say that no matter where you are and where you're from, don't let them tell you that you can't blow up ducks in a film. Absolutely. I've written it down. Thank you so much, Mr Mountain. You have been, as always, an absolute delight. The Improvised Movie Director podcast featured Sabrina Luisi as Martina Minow, with resident improvisers Vicky Hawley and Rory Vieira, with special thanks to today's guest, James Walsh. IMDP is produced and edited by Steve Tanner. Theme music by Matt Brown and Johnny Griffiths. Episode artwork by Marty Sears. Additional music by Stan Babich. Follow us at Improv Movie Pod for updates on future episodes and live shows. Improvised Movie Director Podcast is a four foot one films production. <laughs>